Take 82. Okay. Hey, what's going on, Climber Nation? Patrick here. So today I wanted to take a look at a specific type of three to one mechanical advantage hauling system. And this is commonly known as a Z-Rig or a Z-Rig in the Queen's English. Um, so I'm an expert in nothing, but, uh, but I have been doing tree work for quite a while and I've been setting up and using systems like this for, right from the beginning. So I'm just gonna try and show you guys what I know. Uh, it's not gonna be comprehensive by any means. Uh, but before we get into how to actually build and use a system like this, um, I just want to show you guys some basic concepts, foundational stuff about mechanical advantage uh, so that you can understand what's going on under the, under the scenes, okay, under, under the hood. Um, so first of all, what is mechanical advantage? Mechanical advantage is a way for us to uh, amplify an input force and turn an input force into a, a much greater output force. Um, and the way that we do that is we trade force for distance, okay? So, so for instance, when I say three to one, what that's referring to is whatever I'm inputting into the system, uh, that input is gonna be multiplied by a factor of three, okay? But, but it's doing so by trading off distance. So for instance, for every one foot that I'm able to pull of distance or one meter that I'm able to pull of distance on my, on my load, I'm gonna to have to pull three times that amount of rope through the system, okay? So that's, that's the basic concept of mechanical advantage. It amplifies an input force by trading off uh, force for distance, okay? And then, uh, and then the other basic concepts are when we operate with pulleys, I, I think about it in terms of like pulleys act like mirrors, okay? Meaning whatever, whatever force comes into a pulley is the same force that exits a pulley, okay? Um, so if we think about pulleys in that way, if I'm inputting one unit of tension on this side of a pulley, then that same unit must be coming out on the other side, which means that the pulley itself and whatever it's attached to must be experiencing double right? If it's one unit of tension here and one unit here, then it must be two units on the pulley itself and what it's attached to, okay? So that's the basic, that's the way that we use ropes and pulleys to amplify our forces. Um, and, then, uh, and then the other concepts are uh, when we attach a pulley to our load, we refer to that pulley as the moving pulley or the traveling pulley. It's moving with the load, right? Um, now, any type of mechanical advantage system like this requires an anchor. So an anchor is just, uh, it's a suitably strong uh, stationary point that we can attach slings to uh, and then pulleys. Um, and it's also gotta be in, in the right position relative to the direction that we want our pull, okay? So for this entire example, I'm, gonna, I'm using this tree as my load and I'm using this tree as my anchor, right? So a pulley on my, on my load, again, is the moving or traveling pulley. A pulley on my anchor is what we call the change of direction or, or a redirect pulley, okay? So those are the basic concepts. Once you understand that stuff, now you can start to, uh, to build your own systems, okay? So let's start with, with this, the Z-Rig. Uh, so it, first of all, why is it called a Z-Rig? You can see with the three strands of rope, it kind of resembles uh, a Z or a Z, right? And then secondly, let's look at why, why this is actually a three to one as opposed to something else, okay? Um, and, then we'll, and then we'll look at some limitations. So again, the way this is set up, hang on here. Let me just, okay, so this is, this is how it would look when I'm using it, okay? I'm, I'm on this end, I'm pulling against my load, okay? So if I'm over here, I'm inputting one unit of tension by pulling, so that, that unit of tension is mirrored on the other side of the pulley. So that's one unit plus one unit, that's two units. Now if you take this unit that comes out of the pulley and you look back to the anchor, it's going around its own pulley. So again, one unit coming in, one unit coming out, that unit of tension 
comes up to the prusik here. So one unit plus one unit, you, you know that the prusik has two units of tension plus one unit coming from the backside. So two plus one is three, which is why this is called three to one, okay? So I hope I'm explaining that in a way that makes sense to you guys. I have seen confusion online, people calling this a two to one. Uh, the confusion there comes from, uh, there's a heuristic that we use, which is just like a rule of thumb. A heuristic is a rule of thumb that we know to be technically untrue, but in most cases, it, it does get us to the right answer. Uh, the, the heuristic is to figure out mechanical advantage, you just count the, the parts of rope on the moving pulley. So in this, in this system, you have two parts of rope on the moving pulley. So I have seen people refer to this as a two to one, but it's not because you're not counting the tension coming on the third leg, right? That's why this is a three to one, okay? I hope that makes sense. Um, now back, to, I, I, I forgot a couple limitations to these basic concepts, okay? When I say a pulley acts like a mirror, um, the first limitation is a pulley is never gonna be 100% efficient, right? The goal of a pulley is to reduce friction, but a pulley is never gonna be perfectly efficient. It's never gonna have zero friction, right? There's always gonna be a bit of friction. So when I say that one unit comes in and one unit comes out, you don't actually get a full unit coming out, right? It's always a, a percentage. So um, in this case, I'm using two pulleys. I have two points that are introducing friction into the system. So when I say, when I call it a three to one, technically it's not a three to one. It might be a, uh, I don't know, a 2.68 to one or something. Do you know what I mean? It's less than full capacity. When, when, we, use, when we use nice round numbers like three to one or five to one or whatever, we're disregarding the efficiency loss at the pulleys, okay? So that's limitation number one. The second major limitation is your angles. Uh, when I, again, when I, say, when I say that the force in equals the force out of a pulley, uh, that is only in the case where the rope angles are 180 degrees, okay? So if I'm coming into the pulley and exiting at exactly 180 degrees, then that, then that has the, the potential to have the same input force equal the output force. Again, disregarding friction. So, um, so, so what that means is anytime you, you open up the angles, you're losing, you're, you're, uh, you're losing some of that maximum pull, okay? Maximum pull is at 180 degrees, maximum, maximum load transfer, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm just gonna take this apart and I'm gonna show you how I build this three to one system, okay? I'll show you some of the hardware that I'm using here. And then we'll look at actually building it. So this system here is using one rope. Again, this is what I call an integrated system. It uses one rope. It's the same rope. It's the load line itself is forming the system. Okay, so it's using one rope. It's using, whoops, two pulleys. Okay, in this case, I'm just using these big, nice big CMI pulleys. It's using two INI prusik cords. One is for the attachment up front, and then the other one is on the on the anchor end for um, for progress capture. And then it's using two carabiners, okay? So if I wanted to set this up from scratch, up front, I'm gonna use one pulley, one pulley, one carabiner, and one prusik cord. And on the back end, same thing. Pulley, prusik cord, carabiner, okay? Um, now, you don't technically need uh, a prusik cord up front here. You could, you could use a midline knot, like, a, like an alpine butterfly, for instance, and that would work. So that would be a simpler form. So let's look at that first, real quick. Okay, if I just take my load line, I run it through a pulley on my anchor. 
Okay. And then I come back, I come back on my load line and I just form an alpine butterfly like that. And I put on there, I put uh, a carabiner, right? So I take my, my rope that's leaving my anchor pulley, I put it on its own pulley, and then I snap that onto the beaner, okay? So this would be a, a simpler form of, of a Z-Rig. Um, so anyone who's ever used a trucker's hitch should recognize this basic concept. A trucker's hitch is a, is a more simplistic form of a Z-Rig. It typically uses much less uh, hardware. It, it uses much less hardware, uh, but it also has more friction. So you don't get quite a, as an efficient pull. Um, but uh, like, like for me, when I'm using a, a, a trucker's hitch, really all I need is a sling and a beaner. I, I don't need any of this other hardware. I don't need uh, I to I prusik cords. I don't need pulleys, anything, right? Um, so again, you recognize this, this setup here, right? Just like a trucker's hitch. But this is, a, this is your basic three to one. So again, one unit of tension on this side, it's my input force, one unit of tension, which is mirrored. So you have another, right? So, so one T, two T, two units of tension. So there's, you know that there's two up here, but this carries through my anchor and comes back. This is another unit of tension. So two plus one, there's my three to one. Okay. Now, if you have the hardware, it's even nicer. Instead of a midline knot, it's nicer if you can use a prusik cord. And I'll show you why. So the general rule, rule for prusik cords is it should be about 25% smaller diameter than the host line, right? So this rope, my orange rope here is, is half inch. So I'm looking for a prusik cord around three eighths, okay? Just for a, a, a more reliable grip with my prusik cord. So what I did there is called a French prusik. It's just seven wraps around the line with an eye to eye. And you can find, you can find a link for that on my, uh, on my knots playlist on the channel here. So if I, if I put that eye to eye on my line here and I attach my pulley, Okay, now you can see, again, it's the same setup. Okay, it's the same setup, but it, it allows me more options because now this is a movable point instead of a stationary, right? Like the, the, uh, the Alpine Butterfly was just a stationary uh, attachment. This is movable. Okay, so I can slide it exactly where I need it. Okay. Um, now, one thing about, about this, what I have so far, is I don't have any, any type of progress capture, meaning I can be reefing on this line, right, and I'm, I'm getting a good pull here. This good, I, I'm getting a three to one transferred into my load, but if I let go, I lose all of that. Do you know what I mean? If it, or if it slipped, I'm gonna lose all of that progress, okay? so. A lot of times you'll want to incorporate a, a, what's what we call a progress capture into this system. So to do that, you want some sort of a prusik cord. This is an eye to eye. There are other forms of these, but uh, basically you want to take, you want to come off right off the direct, directly from the load line. Okay. This leg of the line is where you want to put your progress capture in front of, in front of your anchor pulley. Okay. So I'm going to use the same, the same thing here, just a French Prusik, which is just seven wraps. Okay. This is the quick way to do it. I actually, to be honest, I actually prefer a, a Schwabish hitch. I find that it, that it tends better on the pulley, but I'll show it, I'll show it like this and we'll see what that looks like. Okay. So if I have this in front of the pulley and I attach it onto my beaner here, Okay, now what I have, I come back to my input line. 
if you look, if you watch this prusik, as I'm pulling, it's being tended by the pulley. Okay. And then, and then when I let go, you'll see the prusik actually holds that tension. Okay. Now it doesn't hold it perfectly because of what we call sit back. Sit back is, if I'm reefing on this, if you watch the prusik, when I, when I let go, the prusik actually moves, especially if there's a hard load on it, it'll move at least probably two inches forwards. That, that's what we call sit back. Okay. Um, some systems that use cams, a cam is like a locking one way version of a pulley, a cam or not even a pulley. It's just a, you know what I mean? A cam. What is it? Some are toothed. I don't know. You know what I mean? A cam would be more, it, sometimes, a lot of times would be more efficient because it doesn't have nearly as much sit back, if any. Okay. So if I have my system set up like this with, I, not, this is the most, uh, the most efficient and most complicated and gear intensive setup for a Z rig. But the reason I do this is that now I have lots of options. Okay. Number one, number one, as I'm pulling, if I was to slip or, or whatever, if that tension comes off of the input line, I'm not going to lose my progress of, of the tension that I've, that I've put into the system. It's saved. Again, my load line comes straight from the load. It comes to this prusik, which is holding it, right? So it's tight here. Okay. Even though I'm completely off. Okay. And then the other thing is if I was, let's say I'm, let's say I'm pulling something which is constantly moving. Okay. What it would mean is the more I pull and the more that the load moves, the closer this, the moving pulley is going to come back to my anchor pulley. Right. So you could actually, if you kept pulling, you could reach a point where this moving pulley is actually butting up against the anchor pulley. And at that point I can't go anywhere. Do you know what I mean? But in a system like this, where I have a progress capture and I have a prusik cord up, up top, what I could actually do if I had reached a point, if I had reached a point where I've run out of room, because my load has been continually moving. What I can do is let off. Again, the progress capture takes the load. And now what I can do is I can crack this prusik and then I can slide it back out. And you can see I can reset my system. Okay. And now I can continue pulling, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I've definitely forgotten some stuff and, and messed some stuff up, but hopefully that makes sense and you can get some value out of that. Um, next time I want to look at, instead of, instead of an integrated system like this, I want to look at a standalone system, which is more common for, for five to ones like fiddle blocks, but you can also use a standalone system for a three to one. So we'll look at that next time, but, uh, let me know in the comments if, if this makes sense to you guys, if I've, uh, if I've missed some stuff and, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Hopefully that goes a long ways towards uh, some of these basic foundational concepts of mechanical advantage for you guys. Okay. So until next time, peace.